Ginny and Georgia talks about, well, Ginny and Georgia, a mother and daughter duo with very different personalities, even more different than the mom's mismatched hair and eyebrows. The two girls alongside little Austin moved to Massachusetts after Georgia literally murdered her ex-husband with a poisonous, otherwise healthy, blueberry smoothie. This mama is a fasty one. She's hot, she's fun, she's got a finsta, and sometimes she smokes the weed she got from her neighbor's teen son. So edgy. Meanwhile, Ginny, who's secretly excited about the relocation, decided that she's done living in the shadows of her bombshell mom. New town, new her. She can be as cool as a breeze if she wants to, and now is her time to shine. And so, she becomes a conservative nightmare. A progressive, ethically diverse feminist with occasional yet intense racially driven speeches, political outbursts and anger tantrums here and there. She even wrote a slam poetry piece on how exceptional and outside the box she believes she truly is. She can be edgier than a kitchen table when she wants to. In this new school that she joined, nerds are on top of the food chain. She's gonna have her cake and eat it too this time around. Nice house, nice car, and even a nice little boyfriend. If we ignore his douchey eccentric Karen haircut, Hunter is totes adorable. Scratch that, he's Mr. Perfect. The Prince Charming Taylor Swift kept telling us about all through her curly hair phase. Nevertheless, no amount of grand gestures can amount to Ginny's love for bad boys, particularly the boy next door and her new bestie's twin brother, Marcus, who coincidentally also represents a guy from a Taylor Swift song, the troublesome pink hair face. And this one has the guts and the tendency to occasionally climb up her room unannounced. Who cares about manners when he was made feel welcome from day one? After going on a date with Hunter, Ginny let Marcus pop her cherry on the same day, initiating the famous no strings attached will they won't they teenage love affair. A classic. But you know what's even more exciting than love triangles? Love rectangles. Like mother, like daughter. Georgia is also stuck between a handful of potential suitors. Her ex-boyfriend and baby daddy Zion, her new fling, Paul the Mayor, and scammer Joe, the underdog third option thrown in for good measure. As soon as she settles in, Georgia finds herself in quite the predicament. Her dead husband's will was contested by his ex-wife. She's officially broke and criminal activity was obviously her only option. So she starts embezzling funds from boyfriend number two's office. She can't steal purses for the rest of her life after all, especially when her daughter picks up the habit. Speaking of Jenny, she's having no hard time adjusting to her new rich life. Catching the eye of the popular squad certainly had favorable outcomes. She's as pleased as a dog with two tails. Yet something feels amiss. Below the glorious surface, she could sense that things aren't all beer and skittles. Her mom's shady past is slowly catching up on her. Murder, theft, fraud, she's done it all. The whole criminal kid and kaboodle. She even helped her nine-year-old child beat up his primary school bully. And so Ginny launched her own investigation in hopes to unveil all the sketchiness. Be careful what you wish for. In the process of unraveling the mystery, our teen detective bit more than she could chew. The whole can of worms to be exact. Who knew the skeletons in her mother's closet would be actual dead bodies? 2. As fate would have it, Georgia is a homicidal maniac specialized in abusive husbands and stepfathers. A true feminist icon, though Ginny doesn't quite see it like that. When the details of her scandalous liaison are leaked, she finds herself in a precarious situation. Losing her best friends, her lovers and her mother prove to be detrimental. So she decides to hit the road with her brother, leaving everything and everyone behind. The end. Hi.